The following video is a school project for the mathematics subject. In this video project, we are assigned to discuss three lessons from our modules in which we deeply and fully understood. Enjoy! Hey guys, do you want to predict the future? <laughs> it sounds like a superhuman capability, right? Well, maybe. Many people have attempted to predict future events using current information and events. And in this video, that is how we'll be able to predict the future of numbers. Well, a sequence of numbers to be precise. Sequences are important in our daily lives, especially in higher mathematics. For example, the arrangements of the planets of the solar system, uh, squares of numbers, or number of days in a week, number of hours in a minute, the growth of bacteria, and many others. What even is a sequence? Well, a sequence is a list of things, usually numbers, that are in a particular order. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or uh, let's say 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. Now, each number in a sequence is called a term. You have the first term, second term, third term, and so on and so on, and the last term. Sequences can have a last term and these ellipses, meaning it never ends. So sequences can either be finite, having a last term, or infinite, having no last term. More examples, negative 1, 2, negative 4, 8, negative 16, and negative 2, 6, negative 18, 54, and so on. Now, a sequence is usually given by stating the general rule or its nth term. It's basically a formula or a rule that simplifies and shows what a sequence looks like. Here's an example. a sub n sub because of the subscript equals 2n plus 1. Now, n here represents any term number. And a sub n represents the nth term of a sequence. Now since n represents any term number, we can replace it with many numbers. And therefore, a sub n can also be changed to whatever number term, if that makes sense. So we can change n with 1, and therefore a sub 1 can be our first term. And a sub 2 can be our second term. a sub 3 can be our third term. a sub 7 can be the seventh term. a sub aleph null can be the aleph nullth term. Simple stuff. Now back to the formula. We can use this for a couple of things. Let's say we are supposed to find the first five terms of the sequence whose nth term is given by that rule. Well, since we're looking for the first five terms, we can replace n with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Let's do this step by step. Okay, first term. Let's replace n with 1, and therefore it will be a sub 1 equals 2 times 1 plus 1. 2 times 1 is 2, and add that to 1 is 3. So the first term is 3. Next one, replace n with 2, and now we have a sub 2 equals 2 times 2 plus 1. Multiply 2 and 2, we get 4. Add 1 to 4, and we have 5. The second term is 5. Now we can keep on going, repeating these same exact steps, and therefore getting our third term as 7, our fourth term as 9, and fifth term as 11. Therefore, the first five terms of the sequence, whose nth term is given by the general rule a sub n equals 2n plus 1, is 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Alright, another example, what if the sequence is defined by this formula, a sub n equals n squared plus n minus 1, and we are to look for the 10th term of the sequence? Well, like last time, we can replace n with 10, and therefore we get a sub 10 equals 10 squared plus 10 minus 1. Doing the exponent first, and then we have 100, add that to 10 minus 1, and now we have 109. Therefore, the 10th term of the sequence is 109. Alright, another example. What if we're asked what term of the sequence given by this formula is 42? The given term is 42, that is the nth term, meaning we are to look for the term number, or n. Alright, now instead of replacing n, like what we have done earlier, we replace a sub n, to 42. And since we are looking for n, our aim is to leave n alone. Alright, we'll add 6 to both sides, getting rid of the negative 6 on the right side, and then add 6 and 42, now we have 48 equals 3n. And now to get rid of 3 right next to n, we divide both sides by 3, and now we have 16 equals n. Therefore, 42 is the 16th term of the sequence. Now that you know what a sequence is, it's time to explore further. There are many different types of sequences, but in this video, I'm going to focus on two. The first one is an arithmetic sequence. It is a sequence where one term and the next have the same difference. In other words, we add the same value or number to get the next terms of the sequence. For example, this sequence. It has a difference of 3. How do we know that? 
we simply subtract one term, except the first one, to the one before it. And that means for the rest of the terms in the sequence, we add 3 to the previous term. Here's another example. To find the constant difference, or the common difference that it's called, we again subtract one of the terms, except the first term, to the one before it. Let's say we were to fix the second. Subtract 15 and 7, we get 8. And then if we were to do that again for the rest, 23 minus 15 is also 8. 31 minus 23 is also 8. 39 minus 31 is also 8. Therefore, each term of the sequence, except the first one, 8 has been added to the value of the term before it. Another example, negative 2, negative 5, negative 8, negative 1, negative 14. Once again, to find the common difference, we subtract one of the terms to the one before it. So let's say, for example, we take negative 5 and subtract that to negative 2. Negative 5 minus negative 2, we have negative 3. And then if we do that for the rest of the terms, we get the same answer. Therefore, the common difference is indeed negative 3. Now, our arithmetic sequence can be written as the following rule or f term. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the quantity of n minus 1 multiplied by d. Where a sub n is the nth term, a sub 1 is the first term, n is the number of terms, and d is the common difference. Let's see this formula in action with a few examples. What if you were to find the 100th term of the infinite sequence negative 2, negative 5, negative 8, and so on? Well, we can do that with three simple steps. Step number one, identify what are given and what is unknown. Looking at the given, we have 100th term, so n is equal to 100. The first term is given, negative 2. And in order to find the difference, we subtract negative 5, negative 2, and then we have negative 3. And we are supposed to find a sub n. Our step 1 complete, step 2, substitute what are given to the formula. What formula? This formula. Alright. Now that we have our given values, we plug those in the formula, and therefore we have this. a sub 100 equals negative 2 plus the quantity of 100 minus 1 multiplied by negative 3. And then the last step, step number 3, solve for the unknown! <laughs> First, subtract 101 because they are in parentheses, and then multiply that to negative 3, and then we have negative 297. Add that to negative 2, and now we have negative 299. Therefore, the 100th term is negative 299. Alright, let's go for another example. What if you were to find what term number negative 57 is, given that the first term is negative 2, and the term after it is negative 7? Well, again, let's execute our three steps. Step 1, identify what are given. So we have the nth term, negative 57, the first term, negative 2, and our difference, negative 5. And our unknown is the term number, or n. Alright, step 2, substitute what are given to the formula. Bring back that formula, plug in those numbers, and now we have negative 57 equals negative 2 plus n minus 1 times negative 5. Alright, last step, step number 3, solve for the unknown, let's simplify this. Alright, since these two are multiplied, we're gonna distribute negative 5 to n minus 1, and now we have negative 5n plus 5. And again, our aim is to leave n alone, so that the value of n will be found. So we'll bring negative 5n to the other side by adding 5n to both sides. And then to get rid of negative 57, we add 57 to both sides, and now we have 57 equals negative 2 plus 5 plus 57. And then we simply add these, and then we have 60. And then to get rid of 5, we divide both sides of the equation by 5. There we go, the value of n is 12. Therefore, 52 is the 12th term of the sequence. Alright, one more example. What if we were to find the first term if the fifth term is 66 and the sixth term is 72? Again, we'll execute our three steps. Step 1, identify what are given and what is unknown. Alright, for a sub n, we're going to use a sub 6 this value, which is 72, therefore making n 6. And then using the given values, we subtract 72 with 66. We have the common difference as 6. And then the unknown value, which is a sub 1. And then sub 2, substitute what are given to the formula. So the formula is there. Plug in those numbers. We have 72 equals a sub 1 plus 6 minus 1 times 6. And then step 3, solve for the unknown. First, we subtract 6 and 1 since they are in parentheses. And then multiply 5 and 6 together. And then we have 30. We move 30 to the other side, subtracting 72 by that. And then we have 72 minus 30 equals 42, and therefore a sub 1 is 42. And therefore the first term, or a sub 1, is 42. So in conclusion, we can use this formula for finding the nth term of an arithmetic sequence just as long as the other three are already given. Alright, that's it for arithmetic sequence. The second type of sequence is a geometric sequence. It is a sequence where one term and the next have the same ratio. In other words, we multiply the same value or number to get the next terms of the sequence. For example, this sequence, it has a ratio of 2. 
How do we know that? We simply divide one term, except the first one, by the one before it. And that means, for the rest of the terms of the sequence, we multiply 2 to the previous term. Here's another example. Once again, we divide a term, except the first one, by the one before it. Now in this case, since the first one is smaller than the second one, our answer will be less than 1. And therefore, the ratio is 1 4, meaning we divide 4 to the previous term to get the value of 1 term. Alright, another example, negative 3, 9, negative 27, 81, negative 20, 48. It gets big. Again, to find the constant ratio, or the common ratio as it's called, we divide one of the terms, except the first one, to the one before it. And then we have negative 3. Now we can write the geometric sequence as the following rule or nth term. a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Where a sub n is the nth term, a sub 1 is the first term, r is the common ratio, and n is the number of terms. Let's see this in action with a few examples. What if we were to write a geometric sequence given the first term as 2 and the common ratio as 2? Well, there are actually two ways to do this, and one is easier than the other. Let's do both of them, first the not so easily, using the formula, and again with three simple steps. Step 1, identify what are given and what is unknown, so we can see right off the bat the value of a sub n and r right there. And then since we are to write a geometric sequence, it doesn't exactly say how many terms our sequence has to be. So for the purposes of this video, let's say uh, we are going to write down the first 5 terms of that geometric sequence. Therefore n is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and making a sub n as an unknown value. Alright, step 2. Substitute what are given to the formula. What's the formula? List formula, the nth term of a geometric sequence. Now once again, since we are going to write a list of numbers, we are going to use this formula over and over and over again. Let's see what I mean. Plug the value of n as 1 and plug in the rest of our values, making it a sub 1 equals 2 times 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. Alright, third step. Solve for the unknown. Simplify this equation. Alright, take this step by step. 1 minus 1 will be 0. And if you know your rules of exponents, you know that any number that has an exponent of 0 will automatically be 1. Therefore, 2 to the power of 0 will be 1. And then multiply that by 2. a sub n is equal to 2. Let's do it again. For the second term, we are going to be repeating step 2 and step 3 multiple times. Alright, since we're looking for the second term, we're going to replace n with 2. And therefore, we get a sub 2 equals 2 times 2 to the power of 1. And again, if you know your exponent rules, any number that has the power of 1 will be the same number. And therefore, we get a sub 2 equals 2 times 2. Multiply 2 and 2 together, we have 4. Therefore, the second term is 4. And then we repeat that 3 more times, getting our third value as 8, our fourth value as 16, and our fifth value as 32. Therefore, the first five terms of the sequence is 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. Oh boy, that was a lot. What could be the second easier way, like I mentioned earlier? Well, we'll simply take the first term, that is 2, and multiply that to the common ratio, that is 2, to get the second term, 4. And then multiply that to the common ratio to get to the third term, and so on. Yeah, that was a lot easier. So, what can we learn from this? If you're to solve such problems, it is better to choose which procedure you'll find more comfortable, easier, and quicker, as long as the procedure leads to a correct and accurate answer. Now, of course, the lessons that I discussed were just the basics. There's a lot more to learn and do with sequences. Again, this stuff is useful when predicting what will be next. You can use sequences in predicting how much stuff you'll be able to earn if your work and other factors are in a constant interval or pace. You can even use this stuff to roughly predict how many people will be affected by a pandemic in whatever time or date, which kind of relates to what's happening right now. But again, those are just the basics. Oh, that was a lot. Well, I hope you learned something in this video. I did the best that I could. I am not a teacher. And if you want to get better at stuff like this, be sure to keep practicing of it. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. God bless you all, and goodbye.